गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस जेनरेट नेगेटिव सीक्वेंस ओवरलोड प्रोटेक्शन द नेगेटिव सीक्वेंस ओवरलोड प्रोटेक्शन प्रोटेक्ट्स द जेनरेटर रोटर फ्रॉम ओवरहीटिंग ओके सो वी विल स्टार्ट विद द हेल्दी कंडीशन ऑफ जेनरेटर इन द हेल्दी कंडीशन यू कैन सी this is rotor this is the cross sectional view of generator this is rotor this is stator and this is air gap between rotor and stator now this ns is synchronous speed of the rotating magnetic field and the same speed is also followed by the rotor so there is no relative speed between rotor and the magnetic field the rotor is also rotating with the synchronous speed and the magnetic field is also rotating with the synchronous speed so we all know from the theory of machines in induction machines we know the cause of emf over the rotor surface is the relative speed between the rotor and the magnetic field so here there is no relative speed so the emf induced over the rotor is zero so in healthy condition there is no emf over the rotor there is no e induced emf over the rotor so there will be a, not any eddy currents so there will not be any overheating of the rotor and also we can uh, represent the stator current as equal to the positive sequence current because in balanced condition the negative sequence and the zero sequence both the components are zero now let's discuss an unbalanced condition uh, let's suppose this unbalanced condition is also ungrounded fault okay so in ungrounded fault we know the zero sequence component is zero but there is presence of the negative sequence component so the stator current can be written as sum of positive sequence and negative sequence i1 is positive sequence and i2 is negative sequence now the uh, magnetic field we can assume as ns which is induced from the i1 positive uh, sequence and minus ns which is induced from the negative sequence component because both the Uh, components they rotate anti uh, directional means if i1 is rotating in clockwise then i2 will uh, rotate in anti clockwise both are rotating in reverse direction so that's why the rotating magnetic field will also follow the same trend and here i have shown due to i1 the magnetic field is rotating suppose clockwise so due to i2 the magnetic field will rotate anti clockwise now let's apply the theory of machines the induction machines at this place here is the rotor so now what is the relative speed between rotor and the magnetic field between this two there is no relative speed but between this rotor and the negative sequence uh, rotating flux there is some relative speed and what is that relative speed it is just twice of the speed of the rotor so there will be an emf induced over the rotor even though the rot rotor is in synchronous condition there will be some emf which is induced in the rotor surface and the frequency of that emf will be twice the frequency of the fundamental right so here i have calculated the slip ns minus minus ns which is ns plus ns and when ns plus ns is divided by ns the slip will become 2 but uh, the question is now rotor is in synchronous condition so why we are saying that uh, slip is coming this is not the actual slip but i am relating it with the theory of induction machines we can say it's a virtual slip due to which an emf is induced 
But suppose uh, if real slip uh, comes into picture, it will come in a case of unstable swings, which is called outer step, or it will come in the case of loss of excitation. When the automatic voltage regulator, it will fail to create synchronism between uh, generator and the grid. So in loss of excitation, we will get the real slip. At that time also, there will be rotor overheating due to the induction of EMF over this rotor surface. So the, uh, this EMF will create eddy currents over the rotor surface and this uh, eddy currents will create overheating of the rotor winding, uh, of the damper windings and also of the iron body of the rotor. Fine. So this is uh, the explanation between overheating, uh, explanation behind the overheating of the rotor. Now uh, let's go to the relay part, how the protection relays, uh, the advanced protection relays, how they are uh, working. So in the numerical relay, this formula is set. I2 is equal to IA plus alpha square IB plus alpha IC by 3. As in the previous video, I have explained what is alpha and what is IA, IB, IC. IA is the current measured from the R phase of the CT. IB is the current measured from the B phase of the CT or Y phase and this is from the third phase of the CT and alpha is the uh, operator which is 1 at an angle 120 degree. So for more details you can watch uh, the video of phasor analysis where I have explained what is I2 and this I2 remains zero in balanced condition but in unbalanced condition this I2 comes into the picture. Now uh, suppose the I2 calculated by the relay is becomes greater than the setting of I2 at that condition the relay will issue a trip command. Now the question is whether it will issue class A trip or class B trip. It will uh, it is recommended that uh, negative sequence overload protection should be configured in class B protection. Because it's not urgent tripping, uh, the uh, rotors are generally designed to withstand some amount of uh, heat due to negative sequence. Okay. So this is all about the negative sequence overload protection. And the same theory is also applicable in the induction motors. Whenever there is unbalanced, there will be some EMF over the rotor surface and there will be heating of the rotor. So now uh, I will explain. What are the conditions for this negative sequence overload? The first condition is broken conductor. Second condition is reclosure of switchyard, switchyard breaker. Third is mal operation of breaker. Suppose due to mal operation a single pole of the breaker is stripped then also it's a case of unbalance and in this condition uh, some negative sequence component will appear and which will create uh, overheating of the rotor. So I hope you are now clear with the fundamentals of negative sequence overload protection. Thank you and catch you in the next video.